Hey, what's up guys? So today we finally take the first step into learning how to fully implement the Google Play services features within Android with Godot. So the main issue that stopped me from doing this before today has been that um, I haven't really had a project to put it into. So I challenged myself to make a game as quickly as possible for Android in Godot that we could uh, put all of these things into. So, well, I'm happy to say that I was successful and I managed to do it in roughly four hours. I'm happy to show you Solo Slime, a single player score based arcade game inspired by the old slime volleyball uh, browser game that I was obsessed with when I was in high school. Um, so here's the plan. In this video, I'm just going to go over my process in building this game because it was time consuming and, you know, I got to get them views and uh, put out that content, right? In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to implement leaderboards and display the player's rank um, here, as you'll see in the screenshot. After that, we'll throw in some achievements to encourage nerds like myself to reach a high score. And with all that done, we're going to wrap it all up and put some ads in it uh, with an integrate ad mob so we can uh, make some money, which is important to anyone who wants to do this for a living. Once that entire package is complete, we're going to go through the release process through the Google Play to get it out on Google Play Store. And hopefully I will have a link for you guys to download and play the game with me. Um, so after it's released, there's going to be some bonus content because it doesn't really fit within the game style, but we can probably jimmy some stuff in. Um, I'd want to also go into in-app purchases, um, so we're going to do that after everything's released. Um, yeah. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's just jump right into the video. If you're looking forward to this entire series, this entire process, please like, subscribe, and all that other nonsense. All right, so let's go through this. So to start, I decided that the game was going to be super simple. Uh, my focus is mostly on doing the integrations and not the game systems themselves. So um, we're going to have a slime, and he's going to juggle a volleyball uh, on his head. And that's going to be the game. The more times you can bounce it, the higher score you get. Now, with the idea, what I started to do was I started to implement the art. Uh, the art, super simple, is I needed a background, which was literally just going to be like a sky and a ground. I needed the player, which is a slime. You see, it's just a semicircle. And I needed a ball, which is just a circle. So I started off trying to be fancy, adding clouds and, you know, cool colors and stuff, but, you know, I'm not an artist, didn't look good. So I did the tried and true lazy programmer way of doing things, and I generated a color palette online, and boop, 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 I had myself an art style that looked pretty decent. And once I got it on my phone, it actually looked pretty good. So um, once I exported that, I then got stuck into setting up the Godot project. So I started off setting up the window size and ensuring to set it to stretch and to make sure it fits on all the, dev the devices. I then dragged in all the arts and made sure the scene looked good. And with that all out of the way, I started to set up the gameplay. So I decided to go with rigid bodies because uh, I didn't want to have to do my own physics system. Um, so what I all I had to do was I set up a floor as a simple box. The player was set up as a collision polygon 2D where I just plopped in all of the little uh, vertices of the box and it did the rest of its magic and then I uh, added the ball as a simple circle. I enabled gra gravity on everything, put a bounce on the ball, changed the weight on the ball and I added walls at some point and that was the entire gameplay. Um, it was literally just a few objects and a physics system. So with the physics system sorted, I then got stuck into the gameplay. So, you know, the gameplay is very simple. First, all I needed to do was detect whether the ball hit the player, which I would then increment the score, or and I needed to detect if the ball hit the floor, where I would cause the game to lose and display whatever menus. So that was fairly easy. It was just a collide function that uh, checked the name of the various things it collided with. 
So with that done, uh, player input was next and uh, it was a little bit more tricky since I hadn't done uh, the physics system in Godot before, but it all came down to knowing how to use integrate forces on the rigid body object. So once that I got that out of the way, um, everything worked. So the way I decided to make everything work is I wanted to be able to play with one hand and I also wanted to uh, make it very simple, kind of like Flappy Bird. So uh, with those constraints, I decided that when you touch the screen, first touch the screen, it would cause the player to jump and the player to move in that direction. If you held your finger on the screen, the player would not jump again, but the player, the player would continue to move towards where your finger is on the screen. So um, that was uh, fairly simple to put together. I threw it all together and the system, while kind of clunky, was actually kind of what, exactly what I was going for. Um, I was trying to make it challenging um, and I don't think I would have gotten to the level of challenge if I had separated the controls with a jump button and a move button because um, it's very simple gameplay and it'd probably be easy to juggle forever if I did it the other way. So. The gameplay's done. We have player input, we have it detecting win or lose, we have a counting score. All that was left to do is add some simple menus and add Google Play integration. And as a side note here, Google Play integration took me actually, this is why I said roughly four hours. The Google Play integration should have taken me about 10 minutes. It ended up taking me like six hours because one, I need to find a new uh 3.3 compatible build of the plugin which i did find and you can find here and it's linked below um, the main repository is probably going to be updated soon it looked like there was some mo movement in the last couple of days um, additionally i made a my own mistake where i put the sign in function within the auto load which causes it to fail and that is where my six hours went and finally, if you do decide to do it in Godot 3.3, you're going to need to upgrade your minimum API version to 21 in the config.gradle file that you can see here. Anyways, at the end of all of this, after four hours and change of programming and setting everything up, this is what we're working with. You're a slime, you bounce the ball off your head, and you try to reach a high, high score. So this perfectly demonstrates why I love the Godot game engine so much. This was all accomplished in about 200 lines of code, three images, and one scene. Super simple, super easy to do, and I got it running on my device almost immediately. So join me in the next video where I will actually teach you how to add leaderboards and we'll wire up this ranking, um, this rank label so that we can have a competition going on. And if you haven't seen them yet, I have other series, one on C++ and one on the game engine theories that you can see here. Probably there's an end card around now. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.